to talk about what the LitFest is doing, and I think she's a good resource for us to tap into because she's she's developed some tools for that LitFest that I think would be really good for some things that we're planning, like the Art Walk. There's a, 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 a phone-based app that she uses to guide the tour. So I think it'll be good to hear from her. She's also got her fingers into a few other things that uh, I think are appropriate for this committee to know about. Good. Has that been moved to November, will it best? I don't know. I don't know what the schedule is for that. I thought I saw it had been. I'm just making sure. Okay. Um, she She's thinking of doing something in November. It's usually in the spring. I think it's usually right. in April. Okay. And I think it, this year it may be in November. Maybe mm -hmm. to make up for last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or because spring. I know we're putting together a um, open studio art walk uh, the first weekend in November. So I don't know if you can let her know about that. Okay. So maybe that might be something that can yeah. coordinate. Maybe we could do when she comes and present. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Okay. Is that the, is that the uh, annual open studio? Um, yeah, we w were doing this like, it's probably be our sixth year or so. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it last year. It right. used to be part of New Hampshire Open Doors, but kind of separated from them. But then we had our self-guided tour um, of open studios, you know, our front street, you know, the SAA, my studio, um, you know, so mm -hmm. people can drive around and they can um, see the different artist studios. So, so I've been working on that um, to put that together. The first is so it was always the first weekend in November. So I was curious to see if uh, you know, uh, the would Yeah, I'll have to look at it. So it says here that it's April 2022. Yes, yeah, it's, it's normally the f the first weekend in April. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds it looks like they said thanks for your support of the annual Exeter Lit Fest 2021. Next one is April 2022. All right, that's good. When so I was maybe, doing yeah. this, the research for this document I, for the Lit Fest, mm -hmm. I saw a November date, and so we'll just check with her. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's let's get some updates <laughs> on the short term goals. Uh, Scott, you, you and I can, can talk about the. Grant application for the conservation funding from the New Hampshire Council on the Arts. Scott, you want to go ahead? You, I know you've had some discussions yeah. with Greg Bisson from Parks and Rec. Yes, I mean, I pretty much entered everything that could be entered as far as just docs and pictures, and it, it, it's a pretty elaborate online portal, you know. So, I, everything that could go in that I had access to, all the docs that we've gotten, letter of intent, pictures, uh, estimates, resumes for the your guys, the ornamental. So that's all in. Greg's going to do the other pieces that are sort of applicable to. It's just stuff about Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec is actually the applicant. We're just helping him. So um, stuff about handicap accessibility. Stuff about you know just some hoops they need to jump through. Um, and then the big piece is there's these four narrative questions that have just been kind of been kicking around here for about a month. And so. I finally sat down today and whipped up a draft and then uh, sent it over to Tony. So I think we can, we, I think we can, in the next day or so, finalize that. It just needs to be turned into a PDF and then upload it to that portal. And then it's pretty much on Greg to just um, get all that other stuff. So right. Yeah, I, I went over those questions and I embellished and moved some yeah, things yeah. around and sent that off to our contact at the Council on the Arts for a preliminary review. She offered to do that before the grant application went in so that we made sure we ticked all the boxes in our in our narrative. So that went off this afternoon. Uh, the, the grant application is due the 25th, so we have a few days. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not many. So mm -hmm. Is it 25th or is it 25th? I thought I saw the 25th. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's due the 25th, and uh, we'll We'll get it in. I'm sure we'll get it in. Great. Okay. Uh, if, if there's a, if I, I can't imagine there's going to be any big rewrite of those narratives, but if there is, Scott, I'll, I'll work with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I might resign if you do that. But <laughs> 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 so so that's, uh, that's in motion, and we'll get that in, and hopefully you get selected for, for a few dollars to store that yeah. sculpture. And it really needs it. I don't know if all you guys have gone over there, but it's it's pretty rugged. Yeah, I've looked at it. I've, I've gone over there. I haven't looked
looked at it in years and years, but I went over and took a yeah. look at it. And, and then when they finish everything, it's going to look even Stand out even more. Yeah. So. Right, right. Okay, the next thing is the update on the website and calendar. And Ann, Todd, who is this? Yeah, we've been meeting, and I'll let Todd kind of let you know where we're at right yeah. now. Are we going to share documents with the table? Uh, yeah, it was online okay. as a packet. Okay. So if right. people looked at the packet, I don't have like extra copies. All right, I wonder if I Bob's listening in, maybe he can put that up on the screen. It might be good, but it's not really necessary. Okay. Um, yeah, um, and did the good work of going back through, you know, our list of, of venues, places, and um, filling in the, uh, the, the the websites, the links for those. And I think that we are pretty much there. Um, if you go through the document, you see that you know, what the last meeting were just blank boxes have now been filled in, mm -hmm. and. Um, Did you I get input from everybody who owed you input? Not everybody, but Anne did the work of, of supplementing the material that we that we still needed. Okay. okay. Um, we did have one thing we wanted to bring to the table, and it, and it has to do with the the broader categories. You know, we'll we'll have we'll have say on the arts page, we'll have a list of galleries on music or festivals. We'll have the, the broad list of festivals, and what we wanted to to talk about is how in-depth and in detail we wanted our advisory website to be. That is, do we want to bring them simply to a list of the galleries and then you'll go to a gallery and you'll see a schedule of art openings and exhibits. Similarly for, for, for music, would you go, for example, to um, the Sawbelly website and then see the daily schedule or the weekly schedule, the monthly schedule? And we were thinking that it might be best as a point of policy and principle to keep our advisory website broad um, and list to list only businesses and to have the businesses themselves direct us to, or direct visitors or people interested, to individual names. Because we, we think if we try to start including and, you know, individual names is just going to become unmanageable and, and it'll probably become, you know, a process that, 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 that breeds some hurt feelings perhaps too, you know, mm -hmm. people be getting left out. So we thought it might be best if we just kept it broad, wanted to open that up for discussion. Yeah. And I would say not just businesses, but organizations. Organizations. Like it isn't just businesses we're doing. Right. That. And then we included, Tony, you sent something in too that was a good idea. We were trying to highlight some uh, high school um, uh, creative arts in there and maybe some classes and summer camps for kids are in there. So we added what we felt were, were organizations or things offering in mm -hmm. the arts in Exeter as well. So um, uh, the packet pretty much has everything, but we added just uh, about three new things yeah. or four that we found um, that people suggested. Yeah, and we updated some things on Teams. The team appears about three different times on the on the website, right. and we right. we we added a designation to Team that it is an organization that has an ongoing list of individual performers, individual artists, and right. So people would would know that that's where they would go to find more detailed information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think keeping it broad is better because first of all. The, uh, those organizations should have the responsibility for keeping their calendar up to date. If they, if they start feeding things to somebody who's going to maintain a website, it's going to be a nightmare. If you've got a hundred organizations, you know, because it's probably close to that on that list, yeah. feeding feeding calendar items, it's a full-time job for somebody. I think yeah. we point them, we point somebody who gets to the site to the to organization, mm -hmm. and it's, it's their responsibility for keeping their, their own calendar up to date. Yeah. And so, for example, um, that there had been a, uh, a proposal to include Dave's band, Cold Engines, you know, and we were thinking, well, Cold Engines plays around town, and if people are interested in finding where a particular band is playing, they would go to a website. But I think if we start listing, for example, one band, how many other bands, would, you know, are we going to, or how many artists, or how many, etc. But if so, you're listing like independent people, like. Cold engines. Dave Jordan lives in Exeter. Yeah. And then, like, my own studio, which I open up once in a while, um, having that listed, 
they can go to my website and see my open studios. If they go to Dave Truem, who lives in Exeter, who's an artist here in Exeter, and you can go to his website and see where he's playing. What is, I don't see the problem with that. It's, it's well, something that we wanted to discuss, and it does open the invidious question of if we include one, how many then are we going to? Or do we do, or, or do we just say um, it's an open call, and if you want to be on the website, send us your web page. Who's us? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, I'll just say, like, initially the idea was to try and start simply and broad to get a website going, think about budgetary numbers and the maintenance of it, and who's going to be just, you know, even this is a lot to start with. And what we liked about Team is they have a more in-depth list of artists, studi people's individual studios. Um, let's say Seacoast Art Association, we have photographers, we have more musicians that play on the bandstand. Like it, it could just be a huge set of links. And I think the whole thing would end up maybe a failure. If, if we try to just go whole hog. And um, starting this way, it's not like everything's in stone forever, but it's a start to get it done, to get it part of the budget process, and make it manageable, and to be able to go out for quotes without the quotes mm -hmm. becoming very complicated, where people think there's gonna be this ongoing list of people contacting them. Right. You know, I'm not gonna have people contact me all the time. Right. So anyway, I'll just put that out there as w we were trying to discuss things of how, you know, what we could do and um, how we could manage it. And even even this is, you know, a pretty big start. So, um, so Scott, I have a question for you. Would Team's website then be a place for local artists to say, I have a website, like, yeah, I mean, inside a studio is that is that what we're directing people to team well, to see the yeah, we artists? would if team is willing to kind of share in that project of their own because yeah, yeah. your brochure already has a lot of you know listings on it right, right but if team would undertake something like that for kind of the individual list of people that'd be great yeah. you know and then this website would link you up and it links up everybody else that has their list of people right um so I, i'm just still a little confused as far as like where I mean, the more the merrier the more the people are out there the more websites covering it great but it just still seems like i mean we're literally working on our 2.0 of this that has you know all of the the stuff and so the the only thing that was sort of restrictive with this is literally it's kind of like a walking tour so this was downtown uptown mm -hmm. but then for the 2.0 one we were going to do these sort of supplemental maps that were like off the path so that people like adagio dance on epping road or the word barn or whatever the people that aren't right downtown could be included uh we were going to do like a little map that's like local breweries or whatever and so to start doing all that so it's like I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of like where what we're working on and what you guys are working on, where it can be cohesive and then where one can complement the other. I mean, we already have, we certainly don't have a, um, a list of like just straight bands or artists. I mean, we have, but we certainly could do that as far as anyone, like even Bruce, you weren't, he wasn't on this just because it's kind of like a walking map. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think there's all kinds of ways that that they can work together and complement. It could be something where this is a totally, this is the separate website that's right. kind of more right. visual and is more promoting the town as a whole. And then, you know, we've got links to that, you know. Right. Yeah, this is like basically Exeter, you know, arts and culture right. website. So trying to keep it specific. And then I don't know if you saw the websites they gave us examples that yeah, are yeah. town and arts district yeah. websites. Yeah. So they keep it kind of simple like that. They don't get into details of individuals and stuff, but right. just where where do you start, you yeah. know, and then you fan out through something else like team, yeah. you know. So um, uh, the more complicated it gets, the more I don't think it can get.
get done or be part of this year. And we were so imagining we, our audience but, also as, as people who would come to town and just have the question of what's going on. Mm -hmm. right. Where do I go? Yes. People who are already yes. immersed in the community. Yeah. Right. Right. It's like a things to do. You yeah, know, so yeah, when yeah. you you go things to do Exeter, you would get right to this website mm -hmm. and you know, it, it would have an overview and then you can, you know, link up to all sorts of stuff. Um, so so did, did we ever, I'm just also confused because I thought it was like we can't do a website as a committee or commission and that was sort of like firm that it can't come from us. Wasn't that like the, the rule? Not that, that I'm aware of, but I don't know if you guys talked to Bob. Well, I mean, Gulak in those first couple of meetings, that's what I mean, Bob yeah. was like, the sustainability committee ran into the same thing. Yeah. You're okay, not allowed to have your own Facebook sure. page, you're right. not allowed to have your own website, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So. You know, what I saw this as as advisory, we do all the research yeah. and, and advise them to, right. you know, start a website. Mm -hmm. And right. so we've done all the work yeah. of that, and we're going to go ahead and get quotes. Yeah. About and, and four that's the other thing that we want to uh, talk about. That. Designers, yeah. And so for the designers, we have a packet so we can get quotes because nobody wants to hear about anything unless they know what the price sure. tag right. is. Right. And so Exeter, the town of Exeter said, we're going to take over and we're going to hire the designer. Or they'll say, we could still use your help with the quotes and working with the designers, but we'll try to get some economic development funding because we think this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. And it probably should have happened years ago, you know. Uh, but it's certainly great for the arts, for businesses in town, for kids, for families, for residents, for visitors. So I guess my thought from the beginning was we just do a lot of the work, which probably needs to be done because who else is going to do it? And then, you know, once we think we have a nice organized packet of material and quotes, we go and meet up with uh, the town of Exeter. So I would also recommend for um, select board, whichever we go. talking to the communications committee. I know it's like committee to committee, but mm -hmm. they're this is part of I think what they're trying to figure out is how do we streamline information right. to citizens. Right. You know, and this is like an offshoot of that. So right. if we're trying to figure out how to communicate to citizens that there's going to be road work done and mm -hmm. clearly sending mail is not working, how are we doing that? So I think this falls in line with that. So I would hate to see double work taking place where they're considering something along the same lines. This committee is doing that and it's working in silos versus just at least right. tapping in to say, this is what we're thinking. I don't know if you guys have even gotten to that stage yet on what does communication in town really mean and what is that going to look like? And then maybe you can save yourself from double work. Cause my knowledge is that there's no committee that has created a website or gotten the green light to do so. And also budgetary wise, I don't know where. They're going to kick it to, like Bob said it the first two meetings, they're going to kick it to him. Like once it gets yeah, in the, right the, the spinning like, wheel, then they're gonna go. Oh well, you want a website? Well, IT does our websites. I just, I, I personally don't think they're gonna. In my experience, they're gonna be willing to hire an independent contractor as the town to do a website. I, I think. What I would envision work. is if you, Scott, if you go to the if the home tab. Yeah. You know, I, I could envision them creating a tab within. You know the Exeter homepage right. that has the calendar, yeah, like yeah. the agenda, <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 right, yeah. and then yeah. just sort of building off of that. Yeah. Um, Lovey, who okay. chairs the yeah. communications committee? Okay. And I just want to say this is an arts and culture mm -hmm. project. You know, so just keeping it specific. And as far as the Exeter town webpage, I. You know, I could see where there might be a link to arts and culture website, extra arts and culture. But being part of the town of extra website, this, uh, what I'm envisioning, would be <coughs> not a good idea. I, I think the town and government website is a separate entity. And if you look at other towns that are successful in their arts and culture, and they have like an arts district, which that's what I feel we have really, uh, they maintain a separate website that is for residents and visitors. And it's very easy, it's very simple, it's very user friendly. So going through the town pages and all that I think is a bad idea to put the website on. And as far as a separate designer, 
you know, unless we're advising them. So they might say no, they might say yes. So we'll just have to see what they say. You know, economic development may decide maybe maybe we've got some funds for this. They well, certainly put out funds for all sorts of stuff. I know budgets, they, they, they there's all sorts rate. of things you can do. And uh, uh, we were trying to make this as affordable as possible so it could be the start of something. So. And I think that the way I saw the next steps were to do just what you're doing, mm -hmm. determine the scope of this, which, which is, I'd say you're 95% of the way there, mm -hmm. get some cost estimates so that we can support the budget process and provide input to the budget recommendation committee on the value for this. And, you know, in the meantime, I do think economic development should be involved because it'll be a, a driver for Absolutely. economic development in, in the town. Absolutely. And, you know, one other point as far as the budget, you want to be early in the budget. You don't want to be late. You want to be on the table when everybody else is on the table. So that was why I've been trying to really, you know, we've worked a lot on trying to get things done right. on a weekly basis so that we can, like, you know, July 1st. Good. Well, thank you. That's obviously a tremendous amount of work. So you're reaching out to, so you, what are your next steps? The next step is Todd and I will get together. I sent him some links to, uh, I found like four different website graphic type designers. I think one may be more affordable than the other three, but I thought let's just get four quotes and see what people are offering and see if they're interested see what they think the amount of work is, mm -hmm. um, show them examples of some other towns, you know, um, that I've already got set up and and get quotes and see, you know. Good. Yeah, see what we get. And then? And then we come back to a meeting, talk to you guys, here are the quotes we got, this is what we think about the quotes and the designers, and then uh, uh, maybe when we eventually present to the town and and the specific people, uh, they may decide, you know, we'd really like to go for this whole shebang and spend money on this and, you know, get the highest quality we can. Or, we, this looks good, this looks affordable. Start here, this person, looks, you know. So, uh, that becomes our advice and then a discussion with the pertinent people of the town. Mm -hmm. When does the budget recommendation committee start meeting, do you know? We, I mean, they just finished in March, so probably not until the fall will that happen. I know in a town I know they start right now with budget numbers. I think Russ said they're going to start early this year, maybe July or August. Or Possibly. I haven't gotten that. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Do you want me to be honest with you? Um, this is not going to be a priority for budget. Right. Like we literally had a meeting last night about removing an entire road that was built and possibly having to redo it. So I, I want to be like really transparent and clear so that there's not a lot of footwork done for something that may never ever come to fruition or at least not in the next few years. So I would recommend that really have a conversation with Bob first again and just find out exactly like if we do all of this and we set everything up for you is this something that you would even approve or sign off on or would have time to do because anything that's going to be connected to the town has to be sort of managed by the town mm -hmm. now if you guys do something that's completely as a as private citizens who are hosting a web page that's a whole separate you know, it's like one of the Facebook pages where it's like Town of Exeter kind of stuff. That's separate. That's not going to be sanctioned by the offices here. And I think I think this is amazing, and I think it's necessary, but I don't think it's in the short-term needs of the town, at least financially speaking, or man hours. Like we, you know, we're thank God we're able to do this. You know, because we really still need a lot of assistance. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I hate to, I'm like, I show up finally to a meeting. And I'm like, no, I'm a downer. We're, but charged, we're, charged, we're charged only with giving advice. So, right. exactly. That's so I just also want to make sure that you're not putting so much, so many hours. Um, 
because i think this is important information for us to have to say at least look at all of the things that are taking place that many people may not know about how can we provide this information to people in town and to visitors coming in i think i think in our presentation whenever that happens to the town we should um emphasize the tremendous financial benefit you know that that a focus on the arts and culture would bring to the town right especially if, if it's coming down to a crunch of money yeah things are opening up and people want to pay to, and they want to, know where to, go. to enjoy and have right. fun yeah i would be curious for the towns that you have seen the websites with all of the links for the different events taking place are those managed by the town are those privately managed never managed by town. they're subcontracted yeah. Yeah. right and which so which is almost what we might be proposing is mm -hmm. that you're hiring someone and then there's a small amount of maintenance after that's why we didn't want it overly complicated so a person gotcha. says oh it would cost you a little bit when you update something mm -hmm. every once in a while um and worst case scenario you do all this work we find another way to make it happen okay I yeah say, i just want to be yeah you know. yeah it's good to know that going into it because maybe we work hard on getting grants or donations to make yeah. that work right which yeah i bet are out there i don't yeah. know for certain but yeah. i think if we started with the council on the arts you might find some money yeah yeah, yeah. or like you mentioned the high school you know they have a sst so there are different places within town that may also have the manpower at the time That's a good point. students who are you know far more technologically advanced than <laughs> yeah, some of us because yeah. they do have a market and department. that could just be like a whole project that every you know that is worked on and oh, gives back to the town yeah. you know so like I'm, I'm thinking what can we utilize within our town without having to spend a lot of money sure that then we don't just leave to some random person who if they all of a sudden decides that they don't want to do it anymore we lose our entire you right. know because it's going to have to be a contract and, right and i don't and, and most the, of these <laughs> it's not the town it's usually it's a chamber it's a business association it's the arts district nonprofit. it's whatever so it's like that's my concern it's just the you know everybody knows a website it's pretty straightforward but then you're essentially pitching a contract because it's who's Managing who's gonna who's gonna manage it who's gonna update it for how long what's the commitment and all that so i mean i i am 100 percent on board with the concept and let's keep pushing it's just with my personal experience i've pitched things far more clear and simple and they get punted around to different groups and talk to it talk to communications talk to that so certainly i'm all for presenting it and, and getting it out there but you know let's also at the same time discuss a b plan or, or whatever well I mean, yeah we can discuss a b plan <laughs> after presenting to exeter and we'll have a strategy of how we're going to present it to, and to who well um, i think i think knowing what lovey said and I'm, 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 I'm sure it's correct uh let's get the cost of this together and yeah. we'll start yeah. pursuing some other avenues yeah. whether it's a chamber whether it's economic yeah. development or maybe some Main Street grant type money yeah. out there, yeah. uh, or the or the culture arts. I mean the uh, the Hampshire community yeah. and the arts. Yeah. So, I, I I don't think it's wasted work at all, and I just think yeah. it's the, the realities are we're going to probably have to find our own funding. Right. right. And I I just think if you look at other and this is the last thing I'll say, some other towns around that are similar to Exeter, um, this is this is an ace in the hole. Like it brings people to your town. It brings people to your businesses, your arts. They're buying things. They're, you know, they're going to TripAdvisor. So, you know, I think Exeter just has to broaden their mind a little bit because certainly we spend a lot of money on things here, a lot. And this is small potatoes in my in my view. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, we are <laughs> Exeter. Yes. This is Exeter. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, yeah. we, there's this facade that like. We're the ones. We're the arts people. Like so, you know. Let's yeah. Yeah. let's do it. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. You're right. I yeah. I have a feeling we'll get it done somehow. So mm -hmm. the work won't be for nothing. Sure. Anything else on that? Well, thank you, Anna and Todd, for all the work. Uh, I want to talk next about the town hall. As I think I mentioned, I I met with Russ about town hall, and I guess there was some consideration about whether there ought to be some kind of ongoing operating fund for that 
uh, and if you look back at the master plan, which I know we discussed last time, one of the items, the action items, was to come up with a priority list of improvements to be made to the town hall, and one of the support groups for that was the old Arts, arts Exeter Arts Committee. Exeter Arts, arts Committee. Committee. Uh, which I, I see us as the successor to, so I, I figured it was our role to do that. Uh, so I think where we can provide advice is what types of programming, and I think we talked a little bit about this last week, what types of programming we can, what people are looking for, and what kind of improvements do people see as priorities. So I've, I've put together a survey, and unfortunately I only brought one copy, but I'll pass it around, uh, and I emailed everybody yeah, a copy of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, if, if, if you don't need to see that, but it's just, it's a fairly simple survey, it's name, email address, uh, and one of the other questions we're going to ask is what's, what's your connection to Exeter? I live here, I work here, I visit here, or whatever. Uh, what activities or events would you like to see happen in the town hall? What improvements to the town hall would you like to see? And then indicate the order of priority, and it's, it, there's half a dozen items, seven items, uh, not important, important, very important, and then a ranking. What other improvements would you like to see if, in case we missed something? Um, have you attended events in the town hall in the past, yes or no? If yes, what was your experience like? Amber Alert. Um, yeah, that was crazy. It was like heard at the house mm. about a Mexican cartel. Yeah, there's a the answer to if you answered no, why not? And then any other comments? So it's uh, trying to keep it as brief as, as possible. So yeah. it looks great. Yeah, and where would good. this go out to? Well, that's, we, we need to talk about the next steps on that. But uh, Bob can put together a Google, or I don't know if it's a Google poll or Google survey. But then I th we need to publicize it because we want people to know it's out there. And I know Scott Team's website certainly could reach a fair number of people. Uh, I don't know what other mechanisms. Put it on that community forum. And yeah. Find out what the yeah. police yeah. Uh, stakeholders commission, um, what they did. Who's the guy who knows? Yeah, I can. I can. If you have any questions about the Google forms or anything, I'm sure you guys bring that up. So. <laughs> Happy to pop down. What did the. Um, the survey that the police stakeholders um, that was Google form right so how did they send that out um, so we basically put it on the town website and I'm not sure how they were really so successful compared to other ones other than they they reached out to like the chamber to you know different um, museums and groups in town PEA I think um, and they just kind of word of mouth spread it, and they had like over 300 people um, apply to, uh, uh, fill it out um, as opposed to the communication study we did one and we got 70 people right. mm -hmm. um, so um, I think they, they really like spread it around and they had a big committee I think they had like 10 people or so so all of them were asking you know their friends and neighbors and um, it really takes like a big effort to do that um, and I think also on deliberate obsession that we had it ready for that um, so there was like a QR code um, there so people walking in could do it and um, they mentioned it there so I mean if there's some big event that you can mm -hmm. kind of launch it near then and then um, and if the event is it's not like if there was an art event like in Swayze Parkway or something th those people are there for the art so maybe they'll be more likely to yeah, um, do it but um, but yeah it was just they posted it everywhere social media and probably did like a little TV ad for it as well so but I think that the bigger thing they were successful was just word of mouth. So like if you guys did a survey to message all your friends, hey, do you mind just filling this out? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good idea, yeah, Scott, for your, your team arts festivals if we, if we have yeah, a card yeah, with yeah, a yeah. QR code. Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the best way to reach people is like once we have the, the event page for like our festivals, that's where there's like lots of common interaction is we're posting like who's going to be there it's people that are already invested so you, know, you post on there and, and, you know, I don't get a lot of people who can inform I mean it's just it's just splashing it out there to everybody yeah. and, right. and and o other groups who've done surveys they've like incentivized it a little bit so if you had like I could get a free ticket to some show or something and you randomly select somebody who did it um, 
other groups that I've done surveys for, we've we've done like gift cards or something like that. Not for the town, but um, you could maybe you know throw if you could had something to throw in, you know, uh, that gets people um, to want to do it. Okay, and I think you know there's there's a couple of Facebook pages. There's the town of Exeter. Yeah. No, not the town. There's the Exeter community, community forum. forum. Yeah, that I mean that seems to reach a lot of people as well. So I think that's where they are. They're ready. Yeah. So if if there's no other comments, I'll work with Bob just to incorporate those few other changes, and we'll get this thing live. Yeah. <coughs> and I'll get the contact information or the, the will it be that same address. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be. The, I think it should be the same address. And I mean, there were just a few suggestions I would have made. Of, uh, I know we we had that. You know, what's rated on you know an important scale or something. Some of those are hard to, um, like display and kind of uh, afterwards and like charts and stuff. Um, so um, we may want to think about how you phrase some of the questions or maybe splitting some of them up. So. Okay. Um, like if you if you broke some of those questions up right now there's one question with many things and you rate it but if those were separate questions with multiple choice like choosing which one you would get a, a instantly you get a chart that says um, could kind of display um, oh, I see. really easily like how people view about uh, about it with percentages and all that stuff um, so I, I'm happy to you know advise on those ones I guess but um, yeah okay. Well, good. Well, we'll get this wrapped up and ready to go before the next meeting. And it'll hopefully be live before our next meeting. Cool. Uh, trust fund, I don't have any update on this. I didn't get a chance to talk about it. No problem. I didn't get a chance to talk to Russ anymore about what we should do with that trust fund, whether that somehow can be renamed or reallocated to us. There's a trust fund levy that has about $1,800 in it that was created for the Exeter Arts Committee, and it was really a vehicle for contributions to go into. Mm -hmm. um, and But right now, of course, there is no more Exeter Arts Committee. So the question is, is that something we should access, could access, uh, appropriate to access, or whether we should just create a new one and do something with that other one? I Because I know Scott's got some history with that one. Yeah, I, that mean, was created I for think what the logical step is, it, it was it's basically the cash donations that came in to the events that that committee ran. So mm -hmm. it was you know it was a byproduct of those shows. So I mean, I mean I think reinvesting that money into that space. I mean, uh, I've already been talking with Rissa about, and I can't remember if I said it at the meeting or just with some of you guys out of the meeting, but um, we were talking about presenting to everyone here and then to the select board. There's really no structure for that that gallery up there. It, it's just totally grab bag of one organization will put in an application for two weeks for to do an art show and they'll be open only Saturday. Someone else will gobble it up for six weeks and only be open on the weekend. So it, it's a town space. As of now, it's known as the art gallery. Um, you know, the more professional organizations pretty much did one month shows. So we were talking and what we were trying to implement when that committee fizzled was just having a structure so that if you want to do a show there, it's still, op it's still open, it's not, it's not exclusive to certain groups or whatever, but that you know, this is how it's structured so that we make sure that there's a, an art opening for every first Friday with a new group doing their show and that if they want the space at this dirt cheap rate at $200 for a special event, you know, like you will, the gallery will be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, with these hours and just, and make it a, a more structured place so that everyone knows this is when it's going to be open, restaurants can start to promote that, hey, the gallery's here, and, and so then, and part, I can tell you Parks and Rec is fully on board with this because then, um, you know, there's space in there if we wanted to put, um, you know, use the money to reinvest in the space, a little stage, you've been up there, man, it's the perfect place for smaller special events, uh, for speakers, you know, if you want to have a speaker series or something that you don't want to be in a huge town hall space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dan Chartrand would love to use it. Um, you know, it's just, it's it's wasted space and the doors are locked most of the time. So, 
if we have some money that was generated from the events and from a town committee, I mean, I, to me, I don't think you'd get any pushback even from the people that were formerly on that committee if the money's being used to reinvest into the space to keep up the panels where the art's displayed, the new stage, or, you know, whatever it needs. Mm -hmm. Well, I think first we have to figure out the logistics of, can we even access that funding? Yeah, okay. Uh, but didn't Russ say that the... the he wasn't, he has to check with the town, town okay. council to see okay. what what would needed to be done to make that, whether it had to go back to to the warrant article, it had to be a warrant article to, to get that changed, because it, it was a warrant article that originally established that trust fund. Okay. So it may, we may have to wait until town meeting. Okay. Um, I'm just curious, does anybody have any thoughts on that space? I know everyone's probably been up there for different things, but um, you know, it had gotten to a point where there was pretty much monthly shows. Um, you know, I think the money that was raised from the art, you know, shows should go back into that space. You know, it just makes sense. You know, it's like, um, you know, the fees that are getting charged for that should go back into that building. You know, to keep it, <laughs> keep it as a performance in an art space. You know, it's just. But any thoughts on, you know, creating some sort of structure or regularity to the space? Well, you know, what I remember is there was quite a few art shows and some music accompanied the art shows, and I thought it was a great venue for residents. Um, so strategically, if there's a way of outlining people that would use it every so often, I mean, I bought Tracy's piece <laughs> upstairs there. Um, but um, uh, I don't know, maybe you can organize a schedule of people that have done it in the past and yeah. You know, you're going to have so many art shows, so many music venues. You've brought in some uh, outside people in that were really good uh, performances. Um, well, I can see what Scott's saying, you know, because some people tied it up for a month and they were only open for like right. a couple days. Right. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, they just, yeah, they're just you, yeah. Know, you know, we're, you know, we did our events there, you know, Sharon and I were there like every day. Right. You know right. <laughs> well, and it just, you know, like, I mean, people will figure it out and I think there's certain groups that have traditionally done shows and that it'll be open to them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, I mean like SAA, right. you know, they've got their volunteers, but I think if it's structured and the application shows that if you have your show, you're also going to, going to be promoted by this group, by team, by whatever, that I think you're going to draw in all of these great people anyway. I mean, you know, it's like 200 bucks to have an art gallery for an entire month. You know, it's <laughs> <That's cheap>. yeah. <laughs> so, um, are you yeah. suggesting, Scott, that we put some kind of um, stipulation on on people who do secure the space that you need to have it open? A certain amount of yeah, time literally, that we dictate. Yeah. this is what you know. And I talked to Greg about it too because it's it's just the wild wild west as far as you could get an application in for one night for two months for you know, and and so. I think he likes the idea too of, of a structure. Like this is what this space is. This is a town back space that sponsors monthly art shows that are open these nights and then people, you know, if they want to come in and they want to have musicians and receptions that are weekends or whatever and they've got their own, great. If they want to ask someone else, it just it just thinks that I think it'll legitimize it as an actual gallery and venue instead of it just being that space above town hall that half the people in town would about. Yeah, I agree. I think some consistency there would be really helpful to legitimize it, like you say, and to you know not have the randomness of one night it's open and then the next night it's not during a month long show. If there's a consistent set of rules. And it's posted. Right, you know, here, posted. here are the hours. Right. And, um,
Saturday, Sunday, and then that was it. Yeah, and just um, cool for the rest of the week. Yeah, right. but I mean, Marissa and I were kicking around, you know, maybe the, the Friday night opening, the Saturday, Sunday, and then for the rest of the month, maybe, you know, Thursday night for a few hours, Friday night for a few hours, the Saturday and Sunday, just so it's kind of like a long weekend. Would you allow people to double up? So if someone had their artwork up and then others wanted to play music? Well, I mean, that that's, yeah, but then, it, it, you know, that's what we were tinkering with. Like, you know, do we put an asterisk that says, like, <laughs> hey, so-and-so, or the, the advisory commission in town, you know, is open to collaboration if you want musicians to come and play, you know. Like, yeah, like how long does Main Street utilize the space for when they do their... Well, I mean, that's another one that we... The Arts Committee did that, that was dissolved, and then Team and Parks and Rec kind of joined forces on that. So Marissa's on that. So we'll do a Youth Art Month, which is usually February, and it's usually the entire month, and that place is packed, yeah. you know? I mean, obviously for something like that, like, you know, if it's a kid's show. Um, You're less concerned about that. Yeah, but then if, if we know that that's gonna be there every, every February, then maybe we find other kids' organizations that you know, we've had musical arts come in there, you know, okay, we'll come in and do you know, a little mini recital mm -hmm. on the Thursday nights or whatever. I mean, just to move it in the direction of having a, a structure. Mm -hmm. More of structure. Yes. Okay. yes. Or, okay. And consistent structure. And being able to yeah. find out about it when yeah. it's happening. Yeah. You know, it, I just look for the signs on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. But it'd be nice if, it, if there was a posting and you got used to it. But I, yeah, we kind of got to this in a roundabout way, and I, I think that's a great idea, Scott. And it sounds like you're already working with Greg yeah, on that. Um, but nice but this was related to the trust fund, and I, you know, I think the trust fund, we should look at it more broadly than, than the money that just went into it from the art shows. And I agree that people, if they raise the funds from that, we should find some way to allocate the funding f to that. But I think that this could also be the place where not only donations, but perhaps grant monies, chamber monies, private donations can, can land that could be significant and, and really Oh, I got you. So, so, so you're saying literally this group takes control of the trust, trust. so that we have our own trust. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. Because that way, I, and I, I don't understand the legal ramifications of, of it being a trust fund, whether that means it's... We're not a 501c3, although we're part of the town, which is considered non-profit. Right. Uh, whether that would qualify for people that want to make a contribution to it, for example. But certainly grant money could go, go into that. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's, it's, again, that's, that, that's an action item for me. I just need to, to sit down with Russ and see if he's had a chance to talk with the legal counsel yet on it. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I had on the agenda was meeting frequency. We've been meeting every two weeks and actually been making quite a bit of progress. I don't know, given, given the summer and given the activity of the working groups, is, do we still need to meet at that frequency or should we dial it back to, to once a month? Any, any thoughts on that? Uh, once a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think if we focus on work groups and have the work groups meet and then have the one meeting and Maybe it's a little longer to get everybody updated. Because mm -hmm. I think there's some things that are percolating. I mean, we've got Ann and Todd's work. We've got the survey. And we're going to start seeing some results from that. But it's, I don't think it's going to be uh, critical that we meet every two weeks to, to review that. So is there a preference for, I mean, date, Tuesdays work best for me? Is there? I mean, my two cents is that second Tuesday at 6.30, everybody seems to be there. Yeah. And then this is the one that... We usually so we move to 6.30. Yeah, that's like after dinner for kids and right. families. Mm -hmm. uh, is everybody okay with that, 6.30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then what would our problem. next meeting will, will be made? Like three weeks from now or four weeks from now? Where Before does that put us? July 20th. Works for me. Works for me. Works for you? Yeah. 
nobody's off on some big vacation somewhere. <laughs> on what was the date? July July twentieth. Okay. Next meeting, and then we'll do it probably the third. I think that works out to the third Tuesday. And we'll just try to make that the third Tuesday of every month. So you can pencil those dates in your calendar. Okay. Oh, so now we're going to do third. Third Tuesday of every month. That would okay. be that'll be four weeks from today. Okay. Third Tuesday every month, six thirty. Unless I'll see ask Bob whether there's some. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Because like the couple. second Tuesday oh. is the one that we were already in his. Okay. So. We have, <coughs> uh, good point. Yep. So that would be the thirteenth. July thirteenth. July thirteenth. Can everybody do that? I can do that. Okay, so second Tuesday of every month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you might want to put an email out to people that aren't here yet. Can I bring up one more thing? Yeah, of course. Um, so Marissa, Don, and I had just been going round and round a little bit with the, the public art sort of work group. We didn't really, you know, we kind of exchanged some emails, um, just looking to sort of work with town, parks, municipalities about the possibilities of new art, sculptures, whatever, public art. Um, I'd like to see some temporary to mm -hmm. installations, I think would be a great start. I think that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that maybe can work with walking tours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know doing some stuff with Greg at the townhouse common right over there, I mean, that might be where there's no identity to it, that, you know, that maybe that's a good spot for a, uh, a temporary, a temp yeah, temporary so that it's like almost a, there's parks and rec tech control of that, yeah, that, yeah, so, that yeah. so to, to put an installation there, you would go through that, mm -hmm. yeah, right. What about Swayze, or even if it was throughout the town, if there were, were um, multiple installations at one time that were kind of it was connected. Co connected, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, we just go. We got to go through the trustees for that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think also, you know, <laughs> uh, I think along the riverfront would be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, that could be fun, part, and it right? could draw yeah. people yeah. to different parts of of the town. And yeah. I think it. I think it would be yeah, really. Even something right here, where where the fountain used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get a lot oh more. yeah, yeah. Where was that? Just that little. There's a little teeny a little, little pocket no. park across from the Green Bean that used to have a fountain in it. Now it's and just. And there was a, a girl at at the the last Swayze Parkway. Um, well, I guess that's Swayze Parkway again. You know, at the beginning she was thinking that would be a nice little spot for. Her. You know, when you first come in. Uh, oh, Renee with the pocket yeah. park. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. She's she's up way down the road on that one, yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. But I mean, that's a nice little spot. You know, yeah. With, uh, whether, you know, it's not like you would offend anybody, like you know, down in the main part of the park or something. Oh, we'll offend somebody. We won't name it. <laughs> we won't name it. So what's it? What are the next steps? Um. I mean, I guess we just got to get going on that. Um, yeah, we I, need to. Get Marissa really, um, you know, she's kind of into the mural thing. Um, in Portsmouth, they did this cool thing, which was basically the Portsmouth Canvas or whatever they called it. But they, they raised some money and they were basically putting out there that if people had private property inside of a building or a cool fence or whatever, that the private person was willing to say, sure, make this a mural. You know, they had money raised, and then they found an artist, and then the, you know, the artist kind of submitted. So, um, but it was between it became something that was between the artist and the it, owner of yeah, the yeah, space, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't of, something that the right. town had to right. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's yeah, no. Yeah, that makes it. Yeah, yeah. It's just a it's lot putting easier. it out there and finding yeah, people yeah. willing to say sure. Oh. And then it would help promote the, I think, the public art. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, most of these things come through submissions. Right? Yes, 
Yeah, there needs to be yeah. definitely a submission process. Is that something we need to talk to the Historic Commission about? I'm sure we're <laughs> going to have to talk to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it depends you what it is. before the end of summer that I would go with private individuals <laughs> to get it started. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm excited about. As well. And then have an example. Go to Greg <laughs> next. Because right, right. he'll say yes to certain areas that are already not that used. Mm -hmm. And then you can deal with the um, more complicated. Right. I, that's exactly, I think, what we were thinking to start with the private first. Because then you'll get buy-in. You'll get buy-in. Right. They'll yeah. see that it's not, oh, who's going to clean up if there's trash and people are right. eating next to it. You know, it, it becomes, you'd be amazed at the questions that come around. Like, we just want to <laughs> I was thinking nice of murals. Stuff. I wasn't thinking about the... No, I mean, it, literally. It can be a mural. It can be a sign. It, there's, there's always the... Residuals. Yeah, what kind of extra work do we have to do because you're putting that there? And so I think mm -hmm. if you have an example of how well it's working right. yeah. on private property mm -hmm. yeah. and then you're able to do it in other areas, then I think it'll be it'll be a hard for anybody to have an issue with it. Mm -hmm. And it'll just be a nice start to getting some stuff out there for people to see that is happening. Good. All right. Anything else? Let's have it by November. Done, Grace. Just for you. She said done. Sorry, Scott. Any, any, any other yes. business to, to discuss? Okay, nope. hearing, hearing none, is, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you all. Good to see everybody in the booth. Yeah.